I mean, the previous class. Oh, oh recording. I pressed the automatic recording for this class. Uh, before, when I set the class, it went on automatic recording. So there's a reason why. Okay, so no problem. And now for next time. Uh, as you know from the screen, I don't know where it is for you. Uh, we talked today about uh, DAO, and I'm going to go also to the text for today. So I'm going to do a share screen. Um, it is this one. And then from here, we go first back to the top because I didn't. So we're going to start talking about the DAO of uh, the study of uh, DAO mechanisms. And uh, you can see there is quite a lot of text uh, here and also have uh, questions at the end. From the other chapter that I, uh, we talked about last time, there were some chapters on the back. Um, it's helpful for yourself to answer these questions. Does anybody actually make these questions? Simons, but they try to keep up with the questions because they help you to prepare for your later, later use of uh, things. Yes? Mm -hmm. Um, do, you, do you have a place for us? Should we just write these answers for ourselves or do we, do we post them somewhere? For now, it is okay to use them for yourself, uh, but uh, collect them and every now and then you can uh, add them in the eGene group. Yes, because there's only eGene people in this group, it's closed. And you do it there, it's easier than on the, on the drive, I noticed, for some people. But then you just put it there because uh, the idea is that we can all read a little bit from each other and learn from each other as a result of that. Yes? OK. Yes? But just when you write it down, you send it in, write down uh, uh, what part it is about, and also uh, uh, who it is. So in the name giving, you say, for instance, uh, Lucas uh, uh, answers chapter 1, two, two, 3, for instance, or chapter 1, chapter 2, something like this. Yes? Mm -hmm. But uh, eventually everybody can find it back and then uh, <clears throat> maybe better do it like this. Write down answers, chapter one, two, three, uh, and then your name behind so that everybody, all the answers, they come together. They come together as one file when you list them alphabetically. Yes? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> when we talk about uh, Tao, and that's the next thing, right? Because last time we talked about Yuan Chi, we talked about uh, Yang, Yin, Yang, uh, we talked about uh, the Dark Mother, and uh, we, as a sidetrack, we mentioned Tao, right? So we didn't mention Tao directly last time, we didn't talk about it. Uh, the thing is that uh, there is this uh, idea within Taoist culture that there is the, the source of things, and there is the things. And what is between the source of things and the things, that's the Tao. Right? That's basically the idea of the Taoist cosmology that we talk about. But there's way more going on with this uh, Tao things uh, than we would like to admit. And uh, part of the problem is our Western minds, of course. Uh, so these are things that are important. I first go to the character. And I'm going to go through the character with you for a moment. Yes. And this is the yellow brick road. Right? You remember the yellow brick road? We have a I have a really hard time hearing you. You hear me now? It's still not very loud. Okay. Uh, Just a bad mic. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I will try to talk a little bit louder than I do like this, because then you can hear me better. Can you hear me better now? Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Well enough. Yeah. Okay. Good. So then here, this is a person, right? Uh, this is the yellow brick road. This is uh, the horizon. You can say like this with uh, grass and trees and brushes on plants. 
right? And this is the sun. Which sun is this? Sorry, the upper part. Which sun is this? I'm sorry, the upper part is person? Yeah, no, the left part is uh, the person. In total. But, yeah. Okay. The, so the standing part, the one that goes like this, this is a person, right? Then you have the yellow brick road. I'll yeah. write it down. I'll write it down in the drawing. Oh, horizon, thank you. What's that? <laughs> Can't read it. Can't read it? Horizon. The horizon. Uh, this is like around when you walk somewhere, right? You have an horizon, whether it's houses or brushes or bushes or hills, yeah. something like this. And the other one is we shoot sun, okay? Uh, yeah, sun. So it's not Mr. Sun or Mrs. Sun, but it's just. And which which sun is the question? Yeah, which sun is the question? And that's a question that's not normally asked uh, by people, uh, but it's an important question. Rene, sorry, you know this text on screen? Yeah. Have we got this? Uh, yes, it's shared screen. If you go back to my page, you see the, to where I'm talking, you see the shared screen, the study of Tao mechanisms. Or oh, this text you don't have yet. No, are you oh. going to get after the class? Because it depends on how far we get. Uh, where I cut off the text and give it to you because it's okay. now in one big document, right? Okay. So don't worry about it. This is what you're going to get later. Yeah. Yeah. Good that you asked that. I've discussed it, of course, last time. I forget that you don't know yet. Eh? Yes? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I was trying to get Chris in here too, but it doesn't really work like that. I have to change my order of the page. Can I go to the left and the right? Hmm. I lost it. Oh, there it is. Yes. Well, I don't know how it works. Okay. I was kind of hoping I would be able to get Chris and uh, Marina in here too, but uh, it doesn't seem to work. Uh, if I make it bigger, then I don't see the share screen anymore. So. So I hope you don't mind, uh, Chris and Marina. It, not at all, as you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, when you look at uh, uh, Dao, the symbol of Tao, you see that, that the sun is under the horizon. So which sun is this? When the sun rises. Can, yes. The, Internal sun? <laughs> oh, yeah, you might almost say that, yeah. No, it's actually also the sun that sets, of course. Yeah, because in both cases, with both rising and setting, it is uh, in the, below the horizon. And you see the profile of the horizon, right? You see the road, yeah, but you don't see the sun itself. You see only the sun indirectly, basically. If you read the picture, you see the sun indirectly. So the young of things is hidden. Right, it's kind of the young of, of heaven. The young of heaven is actually hidden. <clears throat> and so when we talk about uh, the study of Tao, we talk about either uh, when the sun is below the horizon, so we talk about the dark, right? We talk about the dark and the mysterious things, uh, or we talk about when the light is such that everything is being made very clear because of its contrasts and which is just before the sunrise and just after the sunset, right? So when we talk about Tao mechanisms, we talk about the mechanisms, is that what makes 
uh, something clear. So the Tao is what makes things clear, right? So if something is created, but it's not clear, like for instance, a Barba Papa, you know Barba Papa, the cartoon characters, yep. right? Yeah. These, these are amorph uh, cartoon characters and they talk and they do all kinds of things and they have all kinds of functions, but they don't have a real clear form. They can all the time change their form. So can they be the product of Tao? Based on what I just said. Actually, it cannot. Yes, because Tao makes everything clear. If you are uh, formless, you actually are taking yourself out of Tao, right? Lao Tzu talked about the Tao and he said, you know, you have to try to become formless. You have to try to stay away from action and so forth and so forth. So as a result of that, uh, you actually take yourself out of Tao, right? Take yourself out of Tao. And this is how you study Tao. That's basically what he said. Yes? So by retreating from the, the world, you actually see what things are. And you don't retreat from the world by hiding in a cave, but you retreat from the world by trying to avoid uh, interaction. And that's an important part because in the study of what we are going to do, uh, you're going to be asked to take a position as an observer in many things instead of a participant so that you can see how things play out in spite of you, right? Uh, what we usually want to do is we want to control all kinds of things, but because of our want to control all kinds of things, uh, we don't see the mechanisms at hand. And as a result of that, we can't understand the situation. Yes? So that's the introduction of Tao, yes? That's for now is the introduction of Tao. Mm -hmm. Good. <clears throat> when we talk about uh, Tao, uh, we say, okay, if this is a filter, yes, that actually filters in a young in a particular kind of thing and it makes clear things, uh, makes things clear also at the same time. Uh, that means that the thingness of things is the clarity of things. Usually in uh, like our now practice, we talk usually about uh, the fact that the form of things is uh, important for the function of things. So when we are uh, built as a woman, most likely we will be able to get children. Not always, uh, but there might be reasons for that. But technically, uh, it should be possible to define that if somebody looks like a woman, would we'll probably be able to, to have children uh, or in some phase of their life. On the other hand, for a man, you can say, okay, that is not going to happen, right? Because uh, they are not built for it. Yes, a hammer is not a screwdriver. You understand what I'm saying? Yep. Okay, that's a very important part. Uh, <clears throat> when you look at uh, uh, Tao as a concept, you see that um, in the course of time, Tao was all time viewed in different ways. And if you look at the oldest time in Chinese culture, you see that um, Tao was more like a household word, you can say, just like Qi, right? And Tao and Qi also very often are used inter interconnected with each other. If something has Tao, it has Qi because it's clear, right? It has a form. Um, <clears throat> so when you see the I Ching and the way how the Tao is being approached, is that because of the nature of, uh, of things, uh, when things are clear, it is easy to understand them. When things are muddy, it's difficult to understand them. So the more unclear things become, the more difficult it becomes to understand something, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so in essence, you can say that the I Ching then is in trying to help you to clarify when something is understandable, and when it isn't, yes? So as a, as a functional book for uh, helping you or guiding you towards all kinds of uh, changes in your life, you can say that the eating in that sense is to help you understand where it will be easy to get out of a situation and where it will be difficult to get out of a situation, yes? We're going to talk later about the mechanisms of what works and what doesn't work in the eating. For now, I just give it as a reference uh, as such. Um, when we look at Tao, we can say, okay, 
different times, different parts of the culture, they had different kind of objectives. For instance, when you look at the Confucianism, Confucianism basically talked about Tao as something that happens to an individual. So the Tao of that person is to become an emperor. Feng Shui, in that sense, right, is about the Tao of a family where eventually the family will produce an emperor or a minister or a general or something like this, right? And then all kind of measures has to be taken to actually make that happen. That is in the potential or the mandate that a family has. Uh, but in essence, uh, <coughs> it depends on, uh, uh, on, on uh, how things are being performed during a family. And that is both towards their past as well as to the future. So the proper respect for people in the past of the family, and the proper respect for the actions that have to be taken in the future produce eventually a Tao of a family or a Tao of a person. That's for everybody the same. So respecting your past and uh, working on your future. And that is basically the way that uh, I Ching actually proposes, right? When we talk about uh, Tao in that sense, we have to understand that Tao is about the normalcy of things. So in the previous class, we talked about becoming normal. And uh, you can understand that when you are functioning properly normal, you're functioning in accord with Tao. Right, because Tao is about the normalcy of things. Uh, Tao doesn't create cars, people create cars, right? So a car is not a normal thing. For us it's normal, yeah, but you don't see beavers driving a car. You don't see bears driving a car. You don't see horses take a car. Yes, if they take a car, it is because they're forced to do so. They wouldn't do by themselves. Even though a dog can get used to the pleasure of the wind in his face, uh, and like uh, sitting in a car, but it's not natural for a dog to sit in a car, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, Tao in that sense is about what we said the other time about natural things and uh, unnatural things in the Taoist view. But in the Confucian view, um, it is more about uh, achievement of destiny, right? So your personal destiny in that sense can be to achieve this or to achieve that. Your destiny can be uh, put on to you because of you know the place in society where you are born, like you are the son of the king, or you are a uh, uh, <clears throat> very talented, very bright person, so you can become a great scholar or something like this. And so it depends on a lot of different kind of factors. Yes? Okay. Then when you look at uh, the Taoist view of Tao, you see that it Tao is put into a much larger context. So it's much more put into a context of uh, a larger worldview. And then the larger worldview uh, is uh, what we call in the West usually nature. While in fact, uh, <coughs> in Taoism, uh, in, uh, it's usually called uh, just uh, nature, uh, the, the everything, so the cosmos basically, or nature as, a, as an idea, not as a manifestation. Yes. You understand the difference? The thing is that in Taoism, they don't have the same mental hangups that we have as Westerners. When we talk about heaven, uh, we talk about the place where gods live. While in Taoism, when they talk about heaven, uh, for instance, they talk about a place that actually understands Tao or a thing that understands Tao, that is most close to Tao, is most similar to Tao also in a way. So it's like a ruling factor, right? Tao is a ruling factor, right? That clear? So as a filter from the Yuan Qi towards Yin and Yang, eh, or from, yeah, from, like from Yuan Qi to Yin and Yang, it actually is only uh, ruling how th that things become. It doesn't have a plan like, you know, there's got to be a Claudia, there has to be a Lucas, and there has to be a Dan or something like this. It doesn't work like that. Yes? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which, which, which one? One Chi, through Yin and Yang, you said heaven is a ruler of... Oh, that was, that was before. Uh, mm -hmm. Like heaven is the ruler of uh, everything, so to say, right? And it is like because it is most like Tao. But Tao, the way how it rules, is not by creating individual things, uh, <clears throat> but it is by uh, separating yin and yang. <laughs> and things are becoming things because of their history. 
And as a result of that, there is a habit of creating uh, people. So there's people being created. Because of our society, you have Claudia, you have Lucas, you have uh, Dan, uh, anybody else. Yes? Mm -hmm. So without our society, Dan wouldn't exist. There would be something else, right? <clears throat> and this is where the Confucian view starts, is where the individual is being created. Well, the Taoism says basically this is where Tao is at work, right? So where <clears throat> for a Confucian Tao is where the person is created in society and for uh, Taoists, the, the Tao of creation of everything is at work. And then we have to try to adapt to it and then we have to try to overcome it, right? And that's different. So in that sense, the eating provides opportunity for both situations to work with that because the vision of Tao in Chinese culture is in essence is very ambiguous. Right? It's not very clear. There's so many different kinds of opinions about what Tao is that basically Lao Tzu said at his time already, like, you know, I cannot really explain what Tao is. I call it Tao, but, you know, so many other people call Tao also something Tao, Tao, this, Tao, 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 that, right? Buddhists talk about Tao, Confucians talk about Tao, legalists talk about Tao, uh, the shamans talk about Tao, everybody talk about Tao. Yeah, but my Tao is like known only through its ambiguousness to its formlessness to its and un, and un, lack of clarity so in certain different circumstances the Tao will be defined in a different kind of way but it's still the same Tao yes mm -hmm. the Yi Jing allows you to do that because of its ambiguous nature <laughs> oh that's because of the nature of the Tao oh, the nature of the Tao yeah that's what I mean because of the na yeah. ambiguous nature of the Tao the Yi Jing allows you to then make that yeah, exactly. known so when you look at uh, when you look at uh, the I Ching, then you see that the I Ching is built up from different kind of structures, and you've all had have seen a I Ching. So I can do it just like that as a reference. You have the diagrams of the I Ching. Yes, today we can be put in different kind of orders, and this is an interpretation. Yeah? And what the interpretation means, it gives you opportunity to look at Tao in a particular kind of way. Right? Then when you look at Tao. Uh, the creation of things and you see okay first the th first two things that are being created are heaven and earth right heaven for us heaven is either the christian heaven or it is the space heaven right these two kind of heavens exist for uh the chinese heaven was sometimes was a heavenly being sometimes it was the space sometimes it was uh, the things in space and so on and so forth. So it depended a little bit on the circumstances how heaven would be interpreted. So heaven is most like Tao. Different kind of groups of people would interpret heaven different, uh, like in the same way that different kind of people would uh, interpret Tao different. Yes? <clears throat> so when Tao is free to do its work and it's not hindered by intervention by natural things, then at that moment, automatically the Tao produces Qi, right? The Tao is Qi, you can say. It, through, its, through its work, it manifests its Qi. So when an area becomes fertile and uh, starts growing food and fruits and uh, trees and stuff like this, this is Tao at work. So that area has automatically Qi. This is the Tao Qi, right? Because it happens by itself, you can say. And it doesn't happen by itself, but it happens because of the working of Tao. But on the other hand, if people start cutting all the trees because they want to build houses with it, then eventually it becomes a desert. And as a result of that, it takes nature forever before it can restore the desert and become a forest again. Right? So you see the desertification of uh, many areas of the world. They are not just a matter of uh, they happen to be there, but it is to a large degree through the intervention of people, because this is also all this is also are also in the areas where people first flourished, like 10, 15,000 years ago, and these all these deserts were being created, sort of, and uh, they were created in a time when people, you know, used a lot of forests, apparently, according to historians, right? So. Uh, it is this human intervention that then actually is unnatural and then creates a frustration of Tao. And the eating wants to show you how that works. 
and it wants to show you how through your own naturalness, what we did the homework for last time, uh, last week, last two weeks, uh, wants to show you that through your naturals, naturalness, you actually create the problems in your life, right? So natural things don't solve things. That's basically what it wants to say. But the thing is, because of the ambiguity of Tao, it is easy to have doubt about Tao, right? It's easy to have doubt about whether the world actually really works like that. That is what all the Taoist classics basically talk about. It says, okay, there is Tao, yes, but because it's not clear, it is not easy to explain. So you have to practice it basically to, to come to understand it. And when you talk about Tao, uh, two people might not understand each other's image of Tao as a result of the fact that they maybe why Tao wants to feel of existence. So as a result of that, we are uh, uh, developing doubt. And one of the things that we're going to do to overcome our doubt about Tao and about uh, the I Ching in general is we're going to use the I Ching many, many, many times, right? So I'm going to give you eventually a lot of homework uh, about how to use the I Ching and when to use the I Ching. But that is a little bit later. But at this point, uh, it is important to that you have to realize that uh, <clears throat> the theoretical framework that uh, the, 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 the I Ching provides actually is a form of logic, right? When you look at that logic, it is actually following a very clear central principle where you say, okay, there is a cause of things, that's the dark mother. And then there is the formation of yin and yang. And in between there is the Tao, which actually forms the things. And this Tao actually hides itself. You can't see the Tao at work uh, directly, but you can only see the results of the Tao at work. Right? So the Tao is like the sun being hidden over the horizon, right? There's one uh, writer, and I, I spoke with him about this. Uh, he wrote in his uh, Tao Te Ching, uh, professor, and he wrote about it and he said like, uh, when you look at uh, Tao, uh, you see that um, <clears throat> character of the sun is like the light of the sun coming through the brushes. And at the moment when I was talking with him, I still believed that probably he was right about that. But when I was in China and I talked about it, then uh, my Sifu, he said like, uh, no, the Tao, the sun in there is the light that uh, reveals things because of the relative absence of the brightness of the light, right? So if the light of things if things in itself becomes less bright, and at that moment, uh, you start seeing the nature of things, right? So when you walk outside in, uh, in the time when the sun is just coming up, not visible yet, and in the period uh, when it goes to bed, the lines of the horizon, everything around you in the world is actually very clear. So you can see the shapes and the nature of things. So you can see if something is natural or if it's unnatural. You can see if it is real or if it's a ghost or something like this, yes? Mm -hmm. So that is, a, that is an important part. So when looking at the character, it is important to realize like, okay, you as a person, you are there, you're on the way on the yellow brick road. That word is actually literally used in the I Ching and the Tao Te Ching both. Yes. And at the moment when you uh, <clears throat> look at it, you're walking on this road, you see the horizon and you see that the light is uh, disappearing or coming from behind the horizon. And as a result of that, it actually illuminates things in a way that you can see the nature of things. It means that through the dusk, the relative darkness of things, you can actually see the nature of things, right? That's basically what it says. Creation takes place not in the light, not in the darkness, but in the space in between. Yes? So if you would sign, uh, draw a yin yang sign, then we'll go back to the board for a moment.
I kept on using the wrong marker. Yes, but if you look at the yin yang sign, you see that the yin yang sign actually is like this, right? There's two sides, one is yin, one is yang. Yes, and then in between you see the open line, that's the yellow brick road. And in effect, uh, this is a gray area. This is the area of dusk. It's neither light nor dark, right? When we are exercising in uh, self-cultivation ourselves, we are actually exercised to become this gray area, right? Because then things can reveal themselves the best. So we become a little bit like uh, un un unclear as a result of that. Uh, <clears throat> when we look at, we try to analyze what is Tao uh, through yin yang theory and the study of uh, I Ching and so on, uh, we can say that there are two ways how we can see results. Um, and these two ways, one of them is false and one, is, one of them is real, right? And the false way is the fire way and the real way is called the water way, yes? The fire way is the one where we project our imagination in what we see, right? So by imagining things, like uh, when we do, uh, what do you call this? When you make uh, all kinds of uh, projections about what you want to become real, <laughs> yes? Uh, you are uh, basically really, literally just projecting. You're just thinking about something and then you hope that it becomes like a real thing. And it just do doesn't work because things do not get created out of just a thought. That's just that's not how it works. We are not Tao, right? Uh, things are manifesting themselves because of the way how reality is pressured into things happening. So it means that uh, things, when they are self-so, they are apparently like what they are uh, as a result of a spontaneous self-manifestation. And at that moment, they are real. So for instance, we are looking at the situation and there is the apparent situation as it is, and there is the projected situation. For instance, uh, you are going for a solicitation to a job interview. And at the moment when you go to this job interview, you talk with the people and you think you made a good impression, right? But it's actually a projection because you are thinking that they smile to you because they like you. You think of yourself that you are smart and that you avoided certain pitfalls and the questions that they said and so on and so on. And then you don't get the job, right? So you get shocked afterwards and you just put it under the carpet and you forget about it. You go to your next job interview. And again, you think like, you know, this is uh, nicely done. But the people actually on the other side of the table think like, oh, you must be crazy. Why can you even think about something like this? Or why do you say such kind of things? You think you're being nice and you're being smart or whatever kind of things. So that is projection. And in the I Ching, uh, when we ask the I Ching or we research things in general, not only with that, it's very easy to project uh, our own truths in things. And as a result of that, uh, actually create a false perception of reality, which is only damaging for us uh, in, uh, because it influences our, the way how we act. So that's the fire way. It means that you see something, you immediately judge it, and then you make a decision. This is basically what you what you what you can say what it is like that. It's ironic because when we do Tai Chi lifestyle, actually our action and our decisions have to become integrated with each other. Oh no, our thoughts and our decisions, yes. Our thoughts, our 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 thoughts, our decisions, and our actions have to become integrated with each other in one and the same instant. Um, so, but that is because you first become one with Tao, right? And normally when you are projecting things, you're not one with Tao, you just make a judgment about things and then you act on that judgment. Yes? Well, the water way in that sense, uh, you want something, you want to understand something, you want to research something, uh, you investigate it, you get all the knowledge that you can get about it and then you test it and then you see something happening and you're like, oh, actually, something's happening here. This is great, this is good, right? Because it really happens. It's not what I project into it. It's not that I see it because I see it, but others can see it too. Like for instance, you're practicing Qigong, you feel a lot of energy, but other people don't see it, they don't feel it. 
right? So it's not there, right? They can also project and they can project with you because you happen to be the teacher. Yes, so they're like, oh yeah, I can feel all this energy that you have. Yeah, well, in fact, you were just maybe getting too hot. <laughs> yes? It has to be, it has to become clearly so, right? Like a tree clearly is a tree. It's, it is not a, it's not a, a bite I wanted to say, it's not a white cabbage. Yes, tree is a tree, it's not a white cabbage, right? And as a result of that, uh, yeah, Marina, what did you want to ask? Well, when you say, uh, when you were talking about, you think you produce, you produce energy, but nobody sees it. Um, I presume you're then talking about the situation in where you yourself are not producing the energy in the way that you think you do. Because otherwise, if you are the one who does produce it, but the rest is not able to notice it or acknowledge it, then because they are maybe not schooled enough to see it. No, that's not it. Uh, from the Chinese medicine perspective, there is no energy. Uh, there's either things and there's actions. And as a result, you know, something has chi and there's work being done and that work provides, has, has to provide, be provided by a particular amount of energy by, you know, work that has to be done. That's just thermodynamics. And there is no more than that. So uh, when you feel energy, there is something about what you are experiencing about all kinds of things that are happening inside your body, but it is not necessarily what is actually happening. So what you might consider energy might actually be a stagnation of your blood or fire being created or... Yeah, but I, I, I understand that you were talking about the situation in which one who does it is not doing what he or she thinks he is doing. Yes. It's not talking about the situation in which the one who is doing something produces it, yeah. but the environment is not in a state where it can doesn't really react on it. <laughs> yeah, react or see or uh, wahrnehmen. Uh, yeah. Well. yeah. But then what you perceive as being energy actually might be a problem being caused. Uh, so that's also projection at the same time. So it's projection on different levels. So the one delusion comes with another delusion. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand what you are saying, but... Uh, technically, it's not possible to produce energy without first losing some matter. Because energy and matter are not producing each other. It's either energy, something is either energy or it is matter. So when you want to produce energy, you first have to lose a limb or something. Right? So nobody can feel your energy because, you know, it is, there is no energy. There's just your limbs. Yeah, but <clears throat> my question is not about the process. I think, but about the situation you were talking about um, was still about the person doing something, yes, which he or she is not doing, but just thinking or projecting. No, no, that, no, no. I'm saying somebody is doing something. Somebody feels that they produce a lot of energy with that, yes, and other people don't feel that same thing. They don't notice it. So that means there is no energy being produced because otherwise it would immediately influence the environment. Because when you are producing energy, that means the matter of your body is changing into energy. And as a result of that, uh, work is being done. Technically, yeah, you can say, okay, when you have cellular processes, there's radio waves coming out or there's warmth coming out or something like this. And that is the, res the leaking of energy in the sense that uh, they are, uh, how do you say? they are the result of inefficient use of your body parts. Right? So uh, <clears throat> that means that what you can feel as being energy being produced actually is the leaking of your system. That is, that is a really difficult part of uh, understanding uh, these kind of things. So th that's what I say, when you feel like you produce a lot of energy, that's actually a projection because you're not feeling energy, you're feeling you're leaking. So the reality of things is that you're leaking something while you feel like you're producing energy. Yes? So 
other people don't feel it like that because they don't see that you produce energy. They don't see that you're leaking too. Yeah, so somebody else might not be able to say to you, like, actually, you're leaking some. Like with, with uh, warm hands massaging someone, but the warm hands can be, of, can be of deficiency, for example, my heart. But the one who gets the massage says, oh, that's nice warm hands. I feel the energy of the warm hands. Exactly. Yes, that's, right. that's exactly right. That's a very good description. Yeah. Yes? That's yeah, actually very nice. Yeah. yeah that's Yes, so then when you look further to the Tao, uh, you can say that different schools have different ideas. And in a way you can say Confucianism said, says that the Tao has to do with the moral impulse in things. And uh, the moral impulse has to act, has to help you how to act in society and in the world around you. And you see that Taoism basically took over that idea. For Wudang Taoism, it is because of uh, the morality uh, impulse of Neo-Confucianism, which uh, basically shaped uh, Wudang Taoism, while at the same time uh, the uh, Chuangzhen Taoists, they took the morality impulse that Confucian saw and they, they projected it out into the larger scope of uh, things uh, through which they say, well, if your whole life is a moral act, then at that, at that moment it uh, relates best to all the natural things. And for this, you have to develop your link body because the numinosity of your link body actually is through which you can feel the Tao at work at a certain point because you feel where is affinity, where is aversion, where is natural, where is not natural, right? So the I Ching in that sense is a tool and the Yin Yang theory is a tool to help you guide through all the different kinds of uh, things and to help you overcome your doubts. Yes? So that's basically what the I Ching is for, what the Yin Yang theory is for. To a large degree so it is not like a scientific theory like in the west like this is this this is that yes but it's more like you know this is the reality of things this is the reality of things this is the reality of these things this is the reality of these things yes and then we talk about basically about tao because tao is that what shapes the reality of these things tao is the reality what is what shapes the reality of these things yes so in the darkness of things, in the hidden parts of things, you can see actually what things are. So the I Ching tries to make clear the boundary between the dark and the light and to show as a result of that, uh, what is the reality behind things. Like for instance, um, you like a person. Uh, I always like to use this kind of metaphors because that's relatable for everybody. You like a person and you ask the I Ching, like, uh, what is my chances with this person? So you ask the I Ching and the I Ching says, uh, this, per, uh, this and this person, they are not, uh, they don't have a mandate from heaven. And then you're very clear, okay, so it's not going to happen, right? But uh, <clears throat> if you get an answer like, um, for instance, uh, if you don't want to deal with these persons, just do one step back. Yeah, but you want to deal with that person. So, you know, how do you interpret that you should take a step back or whether the other person is actually taking a step back from you, right? So then you talk about the ambiguity of things, but that, that dark part of the situation that you're in, to which you have your doubts about the situation, why you want to ask the teaching, actually at that moment, uh, you are being made visible what is Tao in the situation, what is the Tao of the situation, the Tao of the situation is you like somebody, somebody is not that much into you. Yes? Mm. A bit. <laughs> yeah. um, you cross the street, uh, also very nice. Uh, you have doubt if you're going to make it to the other side because the street is very busy. Mm. Yes. How do you know if you're going to make it to the other side of the street? Trying. I'm sorry? Trying. Trying. Crossing the street. Just cross the street and hoping that when you get there, okay, I was able to manage. I'll speed up a bit, maybe. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, actually, actually, you want to be realistic about your chances, right? You want to be realistic about your chances, right? <laughs> and what you want to say, like, right, Lucas? I just wanted to say, look both ways before you cross. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
then uh, yeah, it makes sense too. Yeah. No, but in this case, what you want to know, well, you have to understand is like, what is your capacity compared to, you know, the environment around you? So uh, to have to admit that actually maybe because you're sitting in a wheelchair and you're, you have one wheel, which is a little bit crooked, uh, makes it unlikely that you're going to cross before uh, you're on the other side or because you're limping on one leg because you just stood on a nail uh, in the morning. Yeah, that makes it unlikely. But normally maybe you would be able to make it, but now you would make it. So to make to be able to make that assessment and to not to overestimate yourself or to underestimate yourself, uh, this is uh, this is what is important. So at the moment when you uh, overcome your doubts, you're like, oh, I can do it because I, can, I always could have done it. Yeah, so that I can do it now too. No. And then at that moment you project. Yes? What did you say, Dave? Oh, yeah. The buurvrouw wil uh, ja, ik heb het net oh, naar uh, garnizoen. Oké, okay, Claudia? Ja. Oké, okay, goed. <coughs> so then what what we then see is like the big difference between Confucian Dao and uh, the Taoist Dao is that uh, the Confucian Dao is really about uh, your personality, your personal life, right? And for many of us, when we ask things, we want to know things, we want to understand things, it's about us or about the people around us, right? But from a Taoist perspective, you want to understand the Tao of everything, right? Well, maybe when you do the I Ching or you do I Ching counseling at a certain point, then at that moment, you basically talk about the individual Tao of people. But then the larger Tao is not that important. So then this character of Tao is only about the reality of the life of the person you're talking with. As who ask you a question like, how do I solve this problem? Yes, that might be you in the mirror or it might be your neighbor. Yes? No. Okay, do I now forget something? Uh, so how far can I then? There's a piece in also about uh, Kongze. Kongze is the first compiler of the I Ching and he uh, officially, and he wrote a few chapters uh, in addition to uh, the, uh, the, the I Ching to help you understand how the I Ching actually works. Yes? Yeah. So this whole chapter we can do. Okay, good. The next chapter, what we're going to do next time is uh, this chapter, right? We're going to talk about Uji and, and Taiji. Go a little bit more deep into the theory of yin and yang. Yes? Okay, so now, so far we have talked about uh, naturalness. We have talked about conflict. Uh, we have talked about the origin of things. We have talked about Tao. Oh, now we talked about uh, four different factors. Do I say that right? Four or five different factors uh, that are actually helping us create the reality that we live in, right? And we also see the relationship between each other. So there is uh, the dark origin, the dark mother, which is clear. It is there, uh, that's basically an assumption, right? Uh, things come from somewhere, that's basically what it says. And we don't know what that something is, or what it somewhere is, but it is there. It has no form, it has no direction. Then there's Yuan Qi. So something in the dark is steering. And as a result of that, Tao gets to work because the Yuan Qi then gets split off in yin and yang, right? So, so far, everything is very clear, but the Tao itself is not clear, right? Because how does Tao do that? Or why does Tao do that, right? These are questions that are then uh, follow-up uh, issues that are part of the everlasting quest of people who are studying Tao. It's like, why does Tao do this? Why do I need to adapt? Why can't Tao not adapt? Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was doing it so that we can wonder why it's doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, there's like a saying in the Taoism and Confucianism is that, uh, and through Lao Tzu actually, and he said at a certain point, like, uh, what we don't like about, basically what he said, it's not literally like that, but basically what you don't like about heaven is that it always treats people as puppets, as straw puppets, basically, right? As toys. And so heaven just does its things 
and we just have to adapt to it. We can't change these things, right? So the point of uh, Taoist training, for instance, is that we become more like heaven uh, so that we can understand why, what is the use of these things happening? Not so much why it's happening, but what is the use of it, right? Why are these things relevant? Why does heaven want an earthquake, for instance? Seems like weird to want because there's so much suffering as a result of an earthquake. Well, on the other hand, you know, we don't understand the plans of the heaven on the long term. Yeah? They, they live in a different kind of time span. So uh, that is important in, 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 in making clear through the aging, through the young theory, like uh, what is the importance of these things happening, right? And why do I have to suffer with that? How can I avoid suffering with it? Uh, for instance, uh, it's very clear if an earthquake happens and you can jump high enough, uh, you, the floor doesn't shake for you because you're in the air, right? But how long can you stay in the air? You can flap with your hands, whatever you want. That doesn't mean that you're going to be able to stay there for a long time. <laughs> yes? Okay. That's it for today. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Any questions at this point? Uh, I do have one. Yeah. You were talking about the I Ching giving us a filter through which to observe Tao. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> yes, yes. Okay. At work. Tao at work. Yeah. Huh? Tao at work. Tao at work. So okay. We don't look directly at Tao itself, but we basically we look at the, at the results of Tao. So we yeah. basically, we uh, reduce the reality to that what reveals Tao inside. Like for instance, uh, you want to understand why somebody has a heart attack, right? Uh, you can reason about all kinds of mechanisms behind there, uh, but the actual reason why somebody has a heart attack might be something completely different. That you can't figure out from all the symptoms and the signs why this person has a heart attack because it shouldn't happen, right? Mm -hmm. And then you consult the I Ching uh, on the basis of that, and then you find an answer and you ask the person like, oh, okay, did that in that time, did you actually have bad news, maybe? Mm -hmm. And then they say, like, yeah, already, like, so much go, and I can't let go of it, and I kept on worrying about it, and it started eating me up. But that's not something that you normally tell your doctor, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not, yeah. But uh, then I was wondering if, um, depending on, I mean, I think I know the answer, but depending on the culture that you're looking at the I Ching from, then, or even the school of thought within the same culture, like you were saying, Taoists and Confucianists, they see through, so that filter that you're talking about is, is like, there's the I Ching, the filter, but then there's our filter, which is the cultural filter through which we look at the working of Tao. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in our case, yeah, we studied Tao as a as a consultant, future consultant for I Ching. But then we studied Tao, Tao in relationship to the personal lives of people, right? So mm -hmm. that also means that we have to learn to divine reality around us and to understand the nature of all kinds of things around us. And for this, we need facts, we need information, and so on and so on. You can't just rely on the I Ching because you know what you don't know, you don't know. You can't define things that you don't know. You can only define things that you know. Mm -hmm. Right, so it is not like you're producing knowledge out of nothing, and that's not how it works, right? But then for ourselves, moment, then for ourselves, uh, we actually we maybe try to understand the larger picture of things that we can make progress with our practice. Yes, so that's not our personal Tao, but maybe it's about how nature works, so that we can get further with it. So we have to learn to ask questions on different levels at the same time, different cultural views. Was that your question, Sadia? Yeah, that was my question because you said you said before, I think last time, it's about learning to ask the questions, the right questions as well to ask. Yeah. To avoid what Lucas has just said about the way we filter things yeah. through our own lenses. Projection. Yes. Culture is projection, right? Culture yes. science is projection. Uh, Yin Yang theory is projection. Everything is projection in that sense. It's artificial, but we need it to be able to ask questions. But if we project because we want things to be like that, that's not right. 
that's why you have theory because the theory helps you to prevent that you just project what you want it to be. Like for instance, uh, what I said in the format of the relationship and then you, uh, you don't think about it very much. You ask the I Ching, you get an answer and you basically look for a confirmation of what you already want it to be, right? So then you actually react from a subjective perspective. And as a result of that, uh, you actually put yourself on a delusional trail, right? The Tao of delusion. Yes? Mm -hmm. I should make a video about it. Tao of delusion. That was a nice, nice, nice title. Or should I call it uh, delusional Taoist? I can also do that. <laughs> I think that could be another video. Another, another video. I can make a whole series of it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Eugene realists. Uh, <laughs> about realism is always a question How, when you are a realist it's... reality we all need a reality check every now and then yeah so there's no doubt there's no doubt about that <laughs> talk about doubt right uh, <clears throat> everybody smart realizes that they're not very smart okay well, good. Yeah, my reality is that I have to go and work. Yeah, no, I, we are also already over time again with the class. So don't worry. Well, thank yes? you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I just had a cancellation from a client just before class for after, so I was not in a hurry. So take some extra minutes. Yeah. If there's any more questions, post them in the group. And uh, as soon as I have time, I will try to finish the video. Um, with classes like this is actually re relatively easy work i need only like three four hours to make this video for this class but, but i have to do it in two times because if i do it in one time uh which rendering is very difficult but i will try maybe one time if i can do it in one video but that means it's a long sit to see it but our class today was quite nicely unified so it might very well be able to, to be able to do it yes yes thank you, thank you very much and thank i look Look forward to uh, see everybody together in class uh, tomorrow, of course. Tomorrow. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I have other Bye -bye, everyone. <laughs> what kind of projection is that? <laughs> <laughs> My monastic projection, you know, there's no free days. Have a good weekend then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Enjoy your Sunday. I, I actually have to work tomorrow because I have to buy presents for uh, the kids, of course. And uh, for Santa Claus, my wife, my parents. And uh, <laughs> I also have to go visit a 